Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Hello and welcome to the Dave Recap Podcast. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and I'm here to break down every episode of the hit FXX show comedy series, Dave. If you're a fan of Lil Dicky and his unique brand of hilarious and irreverent comedy, then this is the podcast for you. So sit back, relax, and let us submerge ourselves into the world of Dave. This episode, Season 3, Episode 7, Rebirth Day, aired May 10th, 2023, directed by Tony Asinda, another one directed by Tony. This episode, we have Robin from wisconsin is in town coming to visit dave who is staying at dave's place who dave just got a new house got a new nice i don't know if you would call it a mansion it is a really nice house though uh so dave got a house robin is coming to visit and she still doesn't know the whole truth about the death that happened in the last episode she still hasn't been given the whole truth and nothing but the truth uh, it is also Dave's birthday approaching, and his friends have a surprise for him. Uh, we have Benny Blanco is back in the show. It's been forever. I don't think he's been in the season at all yet. Maybe on a phone call with Dave at one point. Uh, but Benny is back, and he has a great moment with Dave's mom in this episode uh, in, in involving a dead seal. Uh, you have Mike finally getting control over a situation in a very unexpected way. And uh, I stress out again in this episode, but for no reason, because this episode was great. And uh, for no reason in many of the episodes, I guess, although the horror episode was kind of stressful intentionally, the Rick, the Rick Ross episode stressful intentionally, but there's so many times where in like every episode I'm thinking in the beginning they're setting up for something to come crashing down later on. And it really hasn't happened. And this episode was primarily a positive episode all around. We do jump to the future in this episode. This episode opens. We get to see... Little Dickie's new house, Dave's new house, this nice, beautiful house, big windows. Uh, you have the Penis Platinum album hanging on the wall. You have a laptop playing uh, Dave's appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel Live. I don't know what that show's called, but Jimmy Kimmel's late night show and him talking about the whole death scare. Uh, you have Benny Blanco producing. They're in like some other room. Uh, where Dave is is rapping, Blanco is producing. You got Gaitas there as well, and uh, Benny calls Dave out for lying on TV, twisting the truth. And Dave's like, "No, no, I just omit omitted facts, right?" So Benny's kind of giving him shit about the whole thing. So it's a lot of people know the truth about what happened with the bus exploding. Some people have their own assumptions of the truth as well which is very interesting but uh yeah benny giving him some shit and dave saying that he's a new man like from this here on out he's not going to be lying at all right not it's just truth from here on out and just after saying that he confesses to gata about uh the, a man's boner not actually having a bone there's not a bone that comes from the man's pelvis to give him a bone it's like it's all flesh it's all meat uh and gata's like oh okay um, so Dave just kind of clearing the, clearing the air one last time as he's making this proclamation of, of only honesty from here on out. And Robin is coming to stay with him for two weeks. And Benny also giving him shit about that. Thinks it's a bad idea. Gata tries to relate his situation, uh, for, um, he tries to relate with a similar situation that was completely far from compatible or comparable. And Gata asks if she knows about the death scam, as he puts it. And Dave doesn't really like that name and, you know, kind of, you know, wants to call it something else, uh, but also says that he has not told her. Um, and there's always a moment. This is the moment. 
where, okay, this is the moment. I'm stressed out. Like, I like Robin and Dave, right? After that episode, I was happy that Allie convinced Dave to keep in touch. We saw them texting in another episode. So I was happy that he kept in touch with Robin because they did have such a good rapport in that episode when he was in Wisconsin. And I felt so bad when she left the message in the previous episode, her crying in his voicemail thinking he was dead. I have literally made that call. I've literally left voicemails like that where you're begging for the person that, in my case, was really dead. Begging for the pleading for them via fo phone mail for it to not be real. And of course, in her situation, it's not real. He wasn't dead. But I still felt I like the it, like heartbreaking that that moment where he hears her voicemail. And uh, Gata says that he's a changed man too. That he hasn't had sex in two weeks. Obviously, we found out that he's a sex addict in the horror episode where he was trapped in the Midwest, uh, or uh, where was he in uh, Mississippi? I think. Uh, and he said he started jacking off again for the first time since he was in 12th grade. And that not only is insane for me to hear, but it's insane for Benny Blanco and Dave to hear. Obviously, we all we know about Dave's massive plethora of toys and 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 tools that he uses to pleasure himself when he's alone. Uh, Dave ends up canceling plans that he supposedly had with Benny and Gaeta to go to the beach. Um, and as he opens like this Amazon package of satin sheets that he ordered, right? Trying to get everything in place. And then as he goes back into his house, he second guesses the, he wrote Robin's name in rose petals at the entryway and decided to clean that up. Thought that was a little bit too much. So Dave kind of going all, like possibly overboard with the Robin coming into town, Benny not buying it, Gata jerking off for the first time since 12th grade. Nice house. Dave, the song that he was working on with Benny, talking, referencing how he's changing his style, how he felt about his old work and things like that. So definitely not rebranding, but definitely changing his style referencing his earlier work saying that he's moved past it so that's how we're opening in this new episode on rebirth day um and uh she shows up it's so awkward when she shows up right immediately she mentions how you know she thought he was dead and he immediately changes the subject uh to just celebrating we should celebrate right and she finds out that it's also Dave's birthday this week. And uh, she just found out. And uh, there's a table full of gifts that Brands had sent Dave. And they want to celebrate with a drink. And he doesn't necessarily know if he has any wine or drink. They have bottles of stuff. And he's like, you can just take any of this. Shows her some headphones. And that's when she finds out that it's his birthday. Uh, and uh, we also find out that she's more of a drinker. Dave obviously likes the weed. He's more of a smoker. So we're already seeing the potential incompatibility because they only knew each other for that one moment in in Wisconsin, that one night in Wisconsin or day. And they have kept in touch, talking, texting over the phone, but you don't necessarily get to know somebody in all of the ways, in the minutia of their day-to-day -day life, knowing what they're into necessarily. I mean, you definitely can get to know somebody, but they haven't cut to mike in a meeting with somebody from the label and uh mike trying to tell them that ava i think is her name uh trying to tell them that dave wants more freedom right doesn't want to be you know tied down doesn't want the label breathing down his neck all that kind of stuff and uh the label doesn't think he uh the label thinks that dave faked his death the label thinks that he rigged the bus to explode. As I mentioned, when 
just before the bus bus blew up, Dave was telling this guy that he has a plan. He knows how to rebrand. He knows how to do this thing. He's got all got it worked out. And the next thing you know, the bus blows up and bada bing, bada boom, right? They think it's a whole P PR stunt for Dave, which Dave, known for doing PR stunts, uh, like when Penith came out and he strapped himself to the billboard in the in the Jesus pose. So Dave has an mo for doing wild things so the the label at this point thinks that he faked it mike trying to like no the rats and all this kind of stuff um and she calls dave a child mentions that when he was in there he was playing with putty in their last meeting and, and mike's like no that was that was like that was prescription putty that was like a therapeutic putty that he was playing with which uh is ridiculous and Mike kind of invites her to coffee. And the way Mike says it, it's like it seems like he wants to like be more personal invite than a business invite. And she kind of interrupts. She's interrupted getting a notification on her phone. Uh, and then Mike goes to leave and uh, she tells him to come over to her place later that night um, and annihilate her. Her words. And then she gives and she's kind of getting uh kind of blurring the lines between consensual and non-consensual she tells him right she's, she's blurring those lines and then gives him her address and tells him to be there uh it gives him her address if she's interested and then tells him to be there at 11 p.m because it should be easy to get in right she's into this consensual non-consensual type of thing right basically role-playing rape or you know that kind of a thing scenario which is like would be a st stressful thing to approach in a trusting relationship not even a trusting even if some of you are just dating for a while but like for this to be the initial with somebody you're working with like there is so many reasons why this is a horrible idea so not only was the the idea of robin not knowing the truth about dave dave's fake death making me nervous but now mike getting invited to this woman's house wanting him to role play being annihilated is also making me nervous right it just like it, it just the, that whole idea stresses me out. But I it's not as stressful because it's Mike's situation and not Dave. Like for whatever reason, I'm more okay with Mike putting himself in this situation. I guess I I, I like Mike. Don't get me wrong. I like Andrew Santino as well. I'm glad that he's. It seems like he's been getting more to do in this season versus p past seasons. Um, but yeah, very also stressing me out cut to robin they're walking dave and robin they're walking to go get alcohol they're you know outside and uh she doesn't get why dave doesn't celebrate his birthday and dave smoking a joint zones out while she's talking about her 21st birthday uh and then uh clearly the weed kicking in uh then she decides to take advantage of his condition and starts to grill him asking him a bunch of different questions like just basic like what's your favorite color he yeah, it's sunset orange she asks, what's your favorite time of day four four fifty five or whatever he's like, probably has to do with the sunset orange she asks favorite animal he says elephant she's like oh that's why i knew that's why i liked you because it's also her favorite animal the elephant right and then again he loses track of what she's talking about dave is so high it's been so long it's been like whew, I don't even know how it's been maybe a year since I've smoked weed, but it's like there's been so many times, especially like watching movies or shows where it's like I have to rewind. I get too high and it's like, what what just happened? Like, what did I, I missed? My brain went this way. Reality went that way. What is going on? And that is what Dave is realizing. Dave is dealing with, which is kind of shitty because he's supposed to be should be in the moment hanging out with Robin. She's in town, and now Dave's mind is not able to maintain focus on anything. 
and he ends up taking another hit of the joint. He's like, what am I even doing? Right. He puts it out and then he like starts clicking and like just like possibly starting to green out, which I've never had happen. There was one time my roommate and I, when I lived in Denver, we got one of those gigantic. They're like a foot long joints. Right. Those raw cones it takes like a quarter ounce of weed to fill. Right. And I got one of those just to say I did it for Thanksgiving one year. Right. Me and my roommate in Denver. Right. Podcasting together. I decided to get this joint. Don't do that with weed. It ends up getting very droopy and saw it's not the best way to smoke weed. But I tell you, smoking that j- massive joint got me high like I had just the high I had when I first smoked weed. Giddy. Like the apartment was filled with smoke. We smoked up until there was probably like four inches left on that massive i don't know if you've ever looked it up look it up i mean it starts off like the the circumference the the end of the joint looked like the the circumference of like a red bull can and it's like a foot long it is a lot of weed right and smoking that smoking dabs and all that stuff i've never greened out but i probably got close and that's what seems like dave has uh has hit Right. He says he's strobing out and he goes to sit down and then out of nowhere, this dog comes by and barks at Dave. Right. Scares the shit out of him. And Dave says that the dog knew the dog knew. Right. Obviously, maybe thinking maybe a little guilty conscience thinking about, um, you know, the secret or the altered truth that he's keeping from Robin. Right. So, like, there's this tension of, like, when is she going to find out? Is this the moment she's going to find out because Dave got too high? He's going to blurt something out. So when the dog comes by, he says the dog knew, right? And she catches him saying that. She's like, what, what does the dog know, right? But let's take a quick break from this episode because I want to talk about, are you looking to add some unique and expressive artwork to your home, office, or wardrobe? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor. That's me. These abstract paintings on paper explore the endless possibilities of the human face, capturing unique expressions of emotion, mood, tone, and energy in just a few minimal features. Now you can bring these stunning and thought-provoking pieces into your own space with high-quality prints and t-shirts featuring designs from the Many Faces series, or take home a -a one-of-a-kind original piece for your collection. Don't miss out on this opportunity to add some original and expressive artwork to your home, office, or wardrobe. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com to browse and purchase original artworks, prints, and t-shirts from the Many Faces series today. And now, back to the show! Cut to her walking him to his bed. They get back to his house. He never made it to the the liquor store. Walks him to his bed. He lays down and tells her that he wrote her a song and then starts playing it off of his phone. And he likes she likes the song, right? And he's like, I, I, got, I still got to do the lyrics for it, but it's pretty fire. She's like, yeah, it's pretty fire, right? And he says he needs to reboot, right? He's going to take a nap. And she leaves. So now she's home alone at Dave's new house. While he's passed out from smoking too much weed. It's just like, I feel bad for it. Like, that's such an awkward situation to be in. Just to be in somebody else's house for the first time and they're not there. Like, nobody is there. You're there by yourself. Feels like you're invading somebody's privacy. But, and she's just visiting. She barely knows this guy. Like, they had their thing in in Wisconsin and they just text. But it's like. Now she's alone in his house out of nowhere. Obviously, she's a trustworthy person. It's not like I'm, I would be worried about what she might do. But still, it's like a shitty situation for her to be there. So she's just hanging out this place by herself. Cut to her kind of laying by the pool. She clearly found a bottle of wine. She's drinking. She's on her phone. Uh, then cut to her climbing this ladder, like one of those ladders you would see in a library. It's attached to a massive tall bookshelf that's like two stories tall. 
this bookshelf and she's climbing up to literally look at the books at the very top of the bookshelf and the whole time i'm like she's gonna fall she's gonna hurt herself what is gonna happen i don't know why i get so stressed out watching this show sometimes but nothing happens then she gets into one of dave has one of those cool like matrix chair things for computers right where it's like the chair will recline and when you recline the the monitor will recline with you everything will recline with you so she like literally reclines it all the way back to where she's laying down so the the monitor which is a giant monitor like 42 inch monitor is just like would be like on the ceiling right they're they're perpendicular to the the ceiling as she's laying down also spilling her wine as she's reclining in this thing one of like it's it's a dream setup i would love to have uh just with all the editing and things i do would love to be able to just lay down and just uh yeah anyway so of course he's got one of those things and immediately she like while she's there she like looks the browser's open she goes to the the fake Google page or whatever is on this. They, they replace Google as, and she starts to type in little Dicky. I assume she's about to type in little Dicky. She only types in the L and the I of little Dicky. And the first two autofill suggestions that pop up are little Dicky, bad person and little Dicky liar. And again, I'm like, Oh shit. This is it. She's going to notice. She's going to think something. This is going to be the thing that asks her the thing. But, of course, I am wrong again because just then somebody is at the door. And, of course, it is Allie. She's returning a tennis racket. And, uh, you know, I think this should be interesting. I am in no way expecting drama. I think Allie is an amazing person. I think Robin are ama- is an amazing person. I think they're both great for dave on one level or another and i aside from thinking he's interesting i'm not this is like the one moment where i am not at all like stressed out right but again maybe the truth will come out maybe this is the truth right she's like why did i just saw a little dicky typing in that like a liar what does that mean but no it doesn't go there and uh they both have heard a lot about each other obviously uh, and all the things that stress me out about this show, meeting Allie and Dave while Dave is sleeping, doesn't worry me at all. Like, this is like, oh, this will be fun. Robin lets Allie know about Dave getting too high and passing out, and Allie's stoked because she can tell Robin about this surprise party for Dave's birthday that they're throwing, and she needs Robin's help to convince Dave to get there because obviously that's what benny and gata were doing trying to invite him to this beach house and now it's Allie's kind of recruiting robin to help right they have this airbnb at the beach and uh robin's concerned about him not wanting any attention and Allie's like don't worry he loves attention right and she's gonna meet his parents as well his parents are in town they flew in town so she's also going to be meeting his parents. So I, I can only imagine the stress involved. Like Robin's going to be around all of his friends and his parents. And it's like so much. So Allie puts her name in Robin's phone under Mike Triangle, which I don't. It's funny, but I, I don't know if that's a reference to something. Then Allie leaves. And as she leaves, the alarm, the house alarm goes off, which is so loud. Dave comes running out. Like completely, completely delirious, and asks if she wants to go to the wine store. And of course, he's still high, um, and asks if she's having fun. And she's like, "Yeah, sure." And he ends up just going back to sleep. Cut to Mike showing up at Ava's house. It's 11 p.m. He's about to sneak in, and just before he goes inside this house. He gets a text message from his dad's nurse asking if he'll be visiting this week, which I find it very strange that his dad's nurse would be texting him at 11 p.m. That is what I have an issue with in this episode, right? Why would he even not only why would she be texting him at 11 p.m.? Why would Mike's phone notify? Why would his phone be on? Like, why would you put that thing in in in? sleep put it to sleep put it in do not disturb what are you doing 
you're going to sneak in to do this role play thing and you got your phone notifications on. What are you doing? Both situations. And I'm like, this is going to be horrible. This is already bad. Mike goes in the house. You see she's on the phone. Mike gets into the house and he's sneaking around. Accidentally hits one of the chairs in one of the rooms. Obviously, it hurts. She hears it, gets off the phone. And then he's like kind of around the corner. He's like, hey, what's up? Hey. Right? So she knows he's there. And this is the thing is starting. The role play is starting. And he comes out. And she pulls out a pepper spray. And he like freaks out because he doesn't realize. He thinks that she... Like, he thinks that he misinterpreted the whole thing, right? He breaks. You don't remember? And she's like, this is role-playing. Like, get, you know, get back in character. She's trying to get him back in character, right? And his attempt at being aggressive, like, talking aggressively is very sad. Talking about coming on himself. Just, like, so horrible to watch Mike try and be this dominant, aggressive guy that she wants him to be in this role-play. And she tries to direct him, right, telling him to grab the pepper spray and forcing her to suck on it, right, and uh, telling him to be a man. Like, saying things that I'm sure are triggering Mike in, like, things that his dad used to say, which, of course, he just got the text about his dad. So, I, I, like, in this moment, I'm like, this is not good. Like, this is going to go bad. She's, like, bring insulting his manlyhood, insulting him, and this is, like, he's not a guy that seems like he performs better after being insulted and mike gives up on the whole role play thing and he tells her that he likes her but he wants to just do something normal right she tells him that she she likes him too but that's the whole reason she invited him over is to do this role play she tells him that she's in control all of the time as this big wig executive person or whatever with her job so she needs to lose control, right? This is her kink. She needs this, right? And she thought that maybe he would want some control in his life, obviously, because he mentioned that he is unable to control Dave, right? He has zero control over anything. So she thought it would be a win-win. She will lose control. He will have the feeling of control, right? So he gets it. He's like, okay, that makes sense. And then he shares his kink that he used to have with women with false or with lopsided breasts and that he was obsessed with them. And it's, of course, it's not. She's like, what? This is not. We're not sure. What is this? And then he tells her he's not going to do what she wants. And then she, and then, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to do what you want. You don't you want me to do this? I'm not going to do that. So in a way, he is taking control. But taking in control in a very Mike centric way, not in the dominant way that she wanted, the the false losing of control that she was intending on and directing him to do. He instead takes that control away from her and just because he wants to just starts being like sweet but also awkwardly sweet like rubbing her arms like you like that no you don't huh like right you want you want you want to come huh it's like well you're not gonna come right because i'm in charge right so very funny hilarious kind of twist on him being in control her being out of control but doing it in a way that's not as stressful as the whole consensual non-consensual thing that she was into it's a very funny way to dominate her, right? And uh, f- funny, funny. Great, great scene. Cut to the next morning. Uh, Robin is on the phone with her mom while Dave is still just waking up. Uh, he slept all night and he woke up. He's sorry, right? But she's very understanding, you know, obviously. Uh, and he's going to make up for it with a roman- with romantic plans for the whole day. And she says that she made plans. Like, well, you can't have plans because we have – there's a surprise thing that I can't talk about. So now there's stress involved with her trying to get Dave to this surprise party. So she says that she has plans 
but asks him to tell her his plans first. And his plans are to turn the backyard into a winter wonderland, right? Which, in my mind, sounds like a bad idea, but we find out that it's a good idea because she loved snow days growing up. So he wants to turn the backyard into a winter wonderland to m- give her a snow day in Los Angeles, which. Of course, something that only a ridiculous, somebody who has a, a ton of money would do. It's a very ridiculous thing. And also very sweet. Um, and her plan when she's like, okay, now your turn. And she's like, well, uh, let's go to the beach, right? Obviously, because the surprise party. Now, my critique, obviously this is a show. This is as writers. There's a reason why she just comes up with the beach. There's a reason why she didn't spend all night like I would have if I were in her shoes. And I found out that I need to get this person who's passed out. I need to make a reason to get them to the beach. What is the most effective and easy lie to tell to do that? And I have all night to think of it zero interruptions nobody else is there the person i'm planning this for is passed out she didn't take any time just we gotta go to the beach i would have been oh one of my oldest friends is in town i would love for you two to meet this is their last day in town they have an airbnb on the beach i was thinking we go get something to eat go to the beach check that out i've never seen the beach dave take me to the beach we can go say hey to my friend you get to meet my best friend in the world blah 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 and then maybe then we'll come back and we'll do something that you want to do right we'll we'll split right there's like easy and then it's like okay there's nothing you can say but all she comes up with is let's go to the beach obviously it's for a reason i know it's for a reason Uh, and of course he hates the beach, right? He hates all the activities associated with the beach and she suggests riding a bike. He can't ride a bike, right? But she's doing her best. She's trying her best, right? She wants to get out of the house. She's like, oh, I've been in the house. And of course, you know, he's understanding of that after leaving her alone all day. So he's like, I'll adapt. I'll adapt, right? I'll call everything off and then come to find out that Everybody's like the the service that was going to turn the backyard into a winter wonderland is there unloading their van. And Dave goes over to the window. He's like, ah, we're done. Sorry. And he's like, maybe I can get, I mean, they weren't setting up. So maybe I can get a refund. Like she feels horrible that he planned this whole thing. Obviously spend a ton of money to do it. Right. Let's take a quick break right now to talk about, are you a fan of original artwork and live events? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor and the weekly live stream over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder. This ongoing series explores the endless possibilities of the human face through abstract ink paintings on paper, capturing unique expressions of emotion, mood, tone, and energy in just a few minimal features. Join me every Thursday at 420 Pacific Time as I paint live. Follow the Many Faces series and discover the endless possibilities of the human face. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the action and own a piece of original artwork by me, Ray Taylor. Head to youtube.com slash inspired disorder every Thursday to catch the live stream and visit inspireddisorder.com to browse and purchase the many faces artwork. And now let's get back to the show. So then cut to the gang, Benny, Gata, Dave's parents. They're at the beach house, right? There's this beautiful painting of Dave in a Sixers jersey, which, you know, when paintings and art is depicted in shows and movies, usually it's not very impressive. This painting, I actually really like this painting. Now, of course, not necessarily a painting I would want to have, but obviously a painting Dave would love to have. Obviously a huge Sixers fan. It's him being portrayed as a basketball player, wearing the uniform, all that stuff. Um Dave's mom complaining about the smell, right? She's like, having this party here is like we're having the party out in the woods, right? We are, this is not 
a good situation. Uh, and she complains about the smell. Benny points out that the dead seal on the on the, the washed up to the beach. And seeing Benny and Dave's mom interact is so great. Something that I never thought I would love to see. Right? See these two characters interact with each other in the same room. Amazing. Gata suggesting that uh, they need to get that seal in the ocean. Benny recommends all three of them. Dave's mom. Gata and Benny go down there and just carry it to the ocean themselves. Gata passes on that plan, does not want to do that. Uh, Benny decides he's just going to get his assistant to handle it. Uh, cut to Allie updating Robin, texting Robin, telling her that they, she needs to be there at five sharp instead of six, which was initially planned. Uh, meanwhile, Dave, they're on bikes. Dave struggling to ride a bike. And in this moment, I'm realizing it's kind of crazy the parallels that I've noticed in different TV shows that I've been watching recently. Dave and Bubkiss both had episodes where their, the inaccurate news of their lead celebrity character dying. In Bubkiss, there's an episode of Pete Davidson dying. In this one, obviously, the Dave episode of him dying. And then also, Dave and Ted Lasso, there's episodes where Roy Kent in Ted Lasso learns how to ride a bike and in this one Dave kind of figuring out how to ride a bike so kind of weird parallels that I've noticed uh, with some of the shows that I've watched recently uh, but Dave kind of gets the hang of it he ends up riding up on the sidewalk to avoid a car that's coming and there's a homeless guy just sleeping in the sidewalk and Dave can't stop Dave doesn't know how to turn At the last minute he kind of goes out of the way and crashes and already robin's idea is backfiring like why why the bikes what does the bikes have to do obviously it's an activity she's probably grasping she didn't plan for it. i don't know i'm very critical of robin's plan or at least ask ally for a story it's like you want to put this responsibility on me you got any ideas for things I can use to get Dave to this place, right? Get some collaboration going on since they kind of put this on you. Last minute. Meanwhile, after the crash, Dave's knee got all skinned up, right? So he's ready to just leave, go home. And now she's scrambling. It's like, oh no. And she's determined to get him to the beach. And he is so over it. And she's like... You, she she recommends she tells him you need to fuck me on the beach right you owe you owe this to me and he's like what are you talking about and then she goes to kiss him and he's like this is the most awkward and not romantic what is going on right now so that's not working right and she's like you you owe me outdoor sex and he's like what are you talking about she's spiraling just grasping for any kind of idea eventually she caves and just tells him about the surprise party, right? And she hates the beach. She hates lying. And Dave takes this moment, decides now is the good time to tell her that he faked his own death, right? Goes up to her and like, I faked my own death, right? And she instantly, surprisingly relates. Uh, and she's like, she faked her own personality for the last 24 hours. It's like, you know, you just kind of got to do what you got to do. They kiss and it's kind of perfect, right? They're both on the same page. So the thing I was so stressed out about him coming clean ends up being nothing. Then stressing about how she's going to get him there ends up being nothing, right? They come clean. He's like, don't worry about it, right? He's all for going to the party. And despite them saying no more lying to each other, Dave says that, you know, he'll pretend to that he didn't know. But that's acting. It's different. It's acting. Right. They're not lying. Cut to the party. Mike is on cloud nine. Obviously, he not only got to hook up with this woman that he likes, who likes him, and he got to, quote unquote, dominate her in his own way, get control in his own way. So Mike is happy, right? Cloud Nine, Dave shows up. Everybody, yay. Dave introduces Robin to his parents. 
You see Els kind of flirting with Emma a little bit. Then you have Robin telling Dave what she got him for his birthday. She adopted an elephant for Dave in Africa. He absolutely loves it. They kiss the end. Great episode, right? And I need to stop stressing out so much in every episode. Despite the fact Mike's situation with Ava turned out great. Robin visiting turned out great. Dave coming clean about the fake death turned out great. Dave's new house is great. Uh, Robin meeting Allie was great. Robin meeting Dave's parents was great. Benny and Dave's mom interacting was great. Everything I had expected to blow up in people's faces ended up turning out to be the for the best, right? Best case scenario in every situation. So much positivity in this episode. I really loved it. It was very positive, right? It had the... It it is it, it the bait and switch, right? It made you think it was going to be a stressful episode where a bunch of things are going to blow up in his face and it turned out to all just be happy. Now I can see maybe people criticizing the fact that uh, just nothing, nothing bad happened. I'm perfectly fine with that. There's enough stress in life for this show to just have a nice episode where everything goes well for everybody involved, right? Uh... I also love Robin and Dave. I'm so glad that Allie gave him the advice to keep talking to her, that not everybody, you have to forgive people for not being perfect, right? And despite how much I loved Allie and Dave and wanted them to get back together, I think Robin might even be a better fit for him, right? And I love how easily everything can work out on a TV show, right? Only three more episodes. It's it's nice when you have writers who can t say how easily everything can fall into place you know as opposed to reality where no, nothing ever falls into place that nice uh but at least it's nice escapism right three episodes left of this show of this season i can't wait to watch to do a complete rewatch of this season i will probably start from the first i will just watch the entire series as i have rewatched the entire series multiple times already uh, but at least in the rewatch, I will not be stressed out. I also won't be taking notes as I do for all these episodes. So I'm excited at the end of the season to go back and just rewatch everything and just enjoy it. Right. Next episode is season three, episode eight met gala. Dave attends his first met gala while Gata attends his first mental health panel. And for me, it sounds like there will be a bunch of cameos in the next episode as Dave goes to not only as Dave goes to the Met Gala, but also potential cameos would not be surprised at this mental health thing that Gata's doing. Right. Wouldn't be surprised if there's cameos at both. And I'm going to do my best not to stress out in the next episode. We'll see how that works. Uh, but either way, that is a wrap for this episode of the Dave Recap Podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you come back next Thursday for or next Tuesday for more laughs, insights, and opinions on this awesome show. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder if you are watching this. Until then, I am still Ray Taylor reminding you to keep it real, keep it funny, and keep watching Dave. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.